One more time, please. 68202. Wow! I didn't know we were gonna go right there. I was looking for the modest prediction. Expectations are sky high. The future is now, and there is so much at stake as the race for the first 200 mile an hour electric dragster run rages on. In this video, we are going to take you behind the scenes and reveal what one talented, driven, and maybe even obsessed racer is doing to make sure he's the first to this all important historical milestone. Only one racer can be first and every precious second counts. The search for more power, better acceleration, and maximum efficiency has been consuming. Settle in, relax, leave your opinions and expertise in the comments below. If you have a question, leave that as well. As this team sends a special message to the legend, Don Garlitz. Cycle Drag, what is up? How you doing guys? Stick with us, we have an awesome story for you. Come on, let me explain. We are in Hawthorne, California. We are here at AEM Performance Electronics. This is one of the biggest names, one of the companies that leads the way in terms of innovation in motorsports. They're really known in the import car drag racing world. Now, why are we here in Hawthorne, California, you may ask? If you've been following along on the Cycle Drag YouTube channel, you know that we are incredibly enthralled and captivated by the battle to see who will be the first to run 200 miles an hour in an electric dragster. Yes, an electric dragster. Right now, you've got two big names gunning for it. Arguably the greatest drag racer of all time, Big Daddy Don Garlitz. Who has the record at 189 miles an hour, and our friend Steve Huff the talented racer out of Seattle, Washington. Who's been 180 miles an hour, but guess what? Steve Huff is here tonight. He's been here for several days, getting major upgrades from the very smart folks at AEM. And he may just be setting himself up for the first 200 mile an hour run. Let's go inside. No, Steve can't be too far. Let's go check in on what's going on here, guys. AEM, how cool is this? Oh, there it is. And there he is, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we knew, we heard the wild man was in the house. Hey, so good to see, see you. Man. I'm probably not supposed to hug the corona, right? I understand. <laughs> So taking a look at this awesome vehicle, before we get into what's new, let's go over some stats here. Your all-time best run to date, again? Uh, best ET, 795. The best mile per hour, 180.8. Four times flash, this electric machine, making some big time power. 814. Yeah, this is kind of the fourth version of the car. So by what I mean by that, we've tried to We've tried two different types of motors. We've tried them with flywheel and clutch. We've tried a direct drive. We've tried a number of ways, and it's always very close to being the same thing. Some some combinations are quick. Some combinations are fast. And uh, you know, horsepower is miles per hour, and torque is uh, ET. So we need a little bit more of both if we're going to be on top of this. And I think what we've got today, a new combination, version number 4.0. Uh, I think we've really got it. So we're going to start, we still have the same battery. Part of our problem, we weren't utilizing all of the amperage available in our battery. This is an 800 volt battery capable of putting out 2000 amps. We were only pulling 1400 amps off of it. So that'd be like putting an extra, you know, 20 gallons of gas in your Nova when you wanted to make a pass. It's senseless. And so, so we're taking down the track, a lot of stored energy that we weren't using. Also in the trailer, we had an extra motor and two extra controllers. And when I say an extra motor, these are dual stack motors. So we had two motors in the car and two controllers. We were only using about two thirds, just 60% of the battery uh, capacity. We've decided now to turn the battery all the way up. And to do that, we've added two more controllers and two more motors. So we started here with our 800 volts and we take these big hot rod cables here, we plug them on in. And then those, that 800 volts DC, 
comes up here, I built a new contactor box. Uh, um, each of these fuses goes to an individual controller. Each controller then inverts it to AC electricity, uh, three phase, 800 volts to each individual motor. Where before we had two, we had one negative and two positives. Now we have four positives, two negatives. Uh, so now we're gonna put 500 amps into each motor, collectively 2000 amp draw off of the, uh, off of the battery. So it's gonna be a hell of a lot more power. Wow, amazing. Uh, these are the controllers. Uh, and if you recall on the other side of the vehicle, we used to have the belt drive in, in this area. Now we've added a couple of controllers in here and the motors are down under here. Uh, they're wrapped in these blankets. Uh, Scott Owens uh, made us these blankets. Uh, so they're ballistic blankets, uh, SFI approved. Uh, Scott would typically use them for his transmissions. We put them on for safety, but there are two motors under each one of these controllers. Each motor is liquid cooled. These controllers are liquid cooled. That's what the radiator is for on the other side of the vehicle. Back here, I'm getting ready to, uh, um, to check our sprockets for run out. We water jet out these sprockets. They're on uh, beautiful worldwide bearings from old Dave. Uh, How about stuff. That? Yeah, that's right. So uh, we still have sprockets. We still have uh, worldwide bearings in there. Uh, we've got, but we have no belt drive this time. No belt drive. No. What, what's your thoughts on that? Because I know for a long time you were belt drive I guy, am, right? I am, and I got to tell you, it is faster. We've proven it. When we can launch with the clutch, on the flywheel mass, you know, we store a lot of energy in this flywheel, angular momentum. That thing was 50 pounds, 12 and a half inch diameter. When we we're launching on a button and that was spinning five to 6,000 RPMs on the launch, it's a lot of stored energy in drag racing. We get a chance to store energy before the light turns green. So we don't have to get that flywheel up to speed. That's, that's why guys launch at high RPMs, whether it's an IC engine or an electric motor, it works better. If you launch your internal combustion engine in a low RPM, you don't have that big mass and the car wants to bog and the motorcycle wants to bog. So we're always working on the two-step and always keep getting that thing up there where there's enough inertia and energy to move the bike forward or the car forward instead of pulling the engine RPMs down or in our case, motor RPMs. If you look under here, I made a, a coupler sprocket that's down here in between these two motors. So you'll see that there's two sprockets on this coupler. So I, instead of the shaft sticking out, running the belt drive, now the shaft is pointed inward. Now, this motor was mounted with the shaft pointed inward. I made a uh, splined coupler uh, with two 19 tooth sprockets on it. Uh, and that will come back to two uh, 67 tooth rear sprockets. They'll stack up inside of here, right next to each other. And uh, again, we're just checking run out on these things, but uh, those ultimately go on the inside. And so we will be running a pair of 630 chains, uh, you know, big, those big old chains that we get from Pingle with old buddy Larry's picture on them. I love it. Um, so I got to step in here. You're a former Nitro Harley guy. You're yeah. a motorcycle guy. Mm -hmm. Is this thing becoming a lot more motorcycle-like? Well, I think it was with the belt drive, it was more motorcycle, but it's always been that. that you know, the top fuel guys and the motorcycle guys in general are very innovative, you know, and my, you know, my teacher, man, Jim McClure, there was, wasn't much better. And he... Uh, you know, these guys, uh, they do a lot of thinking and uh, we can combine these things. You know, we're not mutually exclusive to anything. I can let you in on a little insight that I found out. I, I texted you. I had a recent stop to Ocala, Florida. And of course, that stop was down to Don Garlett's Museum of Drag Racing, where I was able to ask a few questions and get some insight in sunny Florida. The Mecca. Our good friend, the legend, the icon, Big Daddy Don Garlitz, he was not there that day, but everybody told me, because I mentioned Electric Dragster, they said Don is consumed by this. Don has to be first. He is living to be first. Now I'm looking at you and I see that same mentality. You guys are sprinting. I'm not stopping at anything. We are staying here in California until we do it. Uh, I, I, we cannot fit any more room. There's nobody in history that has a battery of this capacity uh we are now have enough uh enough motor to take advantage of our full capacity which we have never ever ever come close to doing so we're going to do it now it is going to be a direct drive uh, will he indeed do it now will we see 680s at 202 and who will be first don garlitz or steve hoff leave us your thoughts on this amazing historical achievement soon to come
Thank you everybody for subscribing to Cycle Drag on YouTube. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the comments, and thank you for also liking CycleDrag.com on Facebook. Share with your friends. If you keep it growing, we're going to keep bringing you awesome stuff like this. Thanks a lot. Yes, much more coming with this epic battle. We have more Steve Huff videos available. Check it out. Leave us your thoughts. Make sure you don't miss a single video. Stay subscribed to Cycle Drag on YouTube. Follow CycleDrag.com on Facebook. And you know if there's anything fast, especially electric vehicles, we're in. Cycle Drag rolls on.